You have about five minutes. Wonderful. Can I get a thumbs up to make sure I'm coming through clear? There it is. Perfect. All right. I'm going to share my screen. So my name is Sean Tyne. I'm, I'm vice president of global partnerships at SourceMap. We are a supply chain and mapping, supply chain mapping and traceability company. Um, Lars, maybe 10 minutes ago, made a comment about the importance of knowing your tier twos and tier threes and working directly with them. But one thing that we constantly find is companies actually don't know who their tier twos are. They don't know who their tier three suppliers are, or they might have a few that they understand, but they don't have total visibility. And that's exactly what SourceMap does. We're a supply chain mapping and traceability platform that um, has 15 years of experience. So we cut across a number of different verticals. We work in food and agriculture. We work in automotive. We work in electronics, apparel, uh, life sciences. We've got around 250 brands that all license our platform to map and trace their supply chain down to the raw material. Uh, we've got around 100 employees and we've mapped over 2.2 million suppliers, which means our collective efforts of all the brands that license our software have gone from tier one all the way down to, in some cases, tier five and six, um, and I've identified their entire supply chain. So at a very high level, what SourceMap does is we you know, map, trace, and monitor. So like I said, you see here, uh, you've got a supply chain map, you show the relationships between tier ones and tier twos and tier threes. We can then do traceability, where we collect chain of custody documentation uh, to validate the supply chain. One of the big questions we often get is, how do we comply with forced labor regulation globally? And a big part of that is traceability, collecting chain of custody documents that validate that the supply chain you, you're using is free of forced labor by uh, not, not running through certain parts of the globe. And so here you see a screenshot of the platform. And then over here, we have a traceability report where in this example, we've run a traceability report for a particular shipment of uh, shirts that have come from Mumbai. And what we've done is we can show you the supply chain for this particular uh, shipment container. And then we also have the documentation supporting that, that supply chain map as well. So I'm going to go into the software here in just a second, uh, just being mindful of time. But really, before folks come work with us, they usually know their direct suppliers. They're, like I said, they're tier ones. It's our software that identifies the tier twos and the tier threes and tier fours and fives, et cetera. And so once we've done that, we can then do quite a few other, um, we call workflows around sustainability goals, which I'll talk about here in a second. But at a very high level, let me just show you what the platform looks like. So this is, so how do we do the discovery? So you as a company register your tier ones on our platform, they create an account. And so here's an example for an automotive example where the company has filled in its particular name, its address, what do they do? So this is a production company. So this is where they essentially register, create an account. And then we're asking for LEI or GLN or Dunn's number because we want to validate the data. And then here at the bottom, they upload their upstream suppliers. So tier one tells us who tier two is, two tells us three, three tells us four. And then the aggregation of all that data collection results in a supply chain map like here. And so here's an example of a, a device manufacturer. You see right here, this is the company. You see the tier ones here. If I click on a tier one, it's going to show me specific information about it. It's going to also show me the relationship it has with its tier twos and threes and fours and fives. And to Lars's point earlier, you can't begin to mitigate and understand the risk of your supply chain if you don't actually know where your suppliers are. And so a big use case for source map is getting a sense of um, supplier concentration. So for example, this supplier here feeds this tier one and this tier one. So oftentimes our customers realize that they've got some bottlenecks and a lot of um, concentration upstream where they didn't realize it was. The last thing I'll show before I turn it off, because I know I've only got a minute left, is once you map your supply chain with source map, we can then do forced labor due diligence workflows so we can collect chain of custody. We can do risk heat maps so we can overlay risk level data to show where your risks are. We can do supplier watch list monitoring where we screen all of your suppliers direct and indirect against a global data set of 50,000 um, entities that have been flagged. We can do scope three GHG. We can help you comply with EU deforestation. We can administer environmental SAQs. A lot of our customers are worried about environmental protection and biodiversity impact. We can do SAQs there. And then finally, as I'm closing out, we also can do disruption monitoring, meaning we can tell you one of your tier three suppliers or tier four suppliers had an adverse event that's going to cause a delay. We can administer business continuity SAQs directly to your suppliers, tier one through tier two and three, to understand their business continuity plans. Then we can also benchmark your suppliers against uh, others to understand which ones have the most risk. And with that, I think my five minutes is up.
John, really fantastic. Thank you very much. Interesting, and I see the supply chain map there. It's also already addressing a lot of the issues that a lot of, of both countries and, and companies are concerned about these days. Deforestation, environmental issues like CBAM, other issues, uh, and, and, and these are, of course, issues that are up and coming. So thank you very much. Very thank interesting. You. And the traceability, the visibility, the predictability that we talked about, again, is, is uh, coming through here. Thank you.